What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast. We are here today enjoying MLB The Show. Not the content. No, no, no. Don't get it twisted there. No. The gameplay is actually kind of okay. We can mostly agree on that. It's the content now that needs some work. Set 2 showed us the downsides, the potential issues with the Sets and Seasons method. I still think Sets and Seasons is good. I'm going to continue reiterating that until I feel otherwise. Set 3 is going to be big. Set 3 is going to be crucial in determining how the Sets and Seasons method works. So today we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about Set 3, my expectations, more like my hopes rather than expectations. Talking more about how SDS can correct the issues with Set 2 and get back to what we loved about Set 1. I think most of us can agree that Set 1 was a ton of fun. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what a Day 1 Set 2, or sorry, Day 1 Set 3 lineup is going to look like. It's going to be comprised entirely of Set 2 and Core cards. Full disclaimer, you do not have to have every card in the game anymore for collections. So I don't have every card in the game. And honestly, I have no intentions on doing so. I have the cards that I want to use who I feel are important and meta. You might have some differences, and that's fine. I'm not telling you this is your end-all, be-one, be-all, day-one, set-three team. I don't care who you use, you use whoever you want. Just telling you what mine might look like, just to get an idea of how set-one heavily influenced a lot of the cards in the game. Okay? So let's start there. Everybody, welcome back to the show, the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. It's another week. I'm happy to be creating content for y'all. So, set two was okay at the top. Top heavy cards at set two were pretty fun. Got real bad real fast. But if we're looking at what a day one set three lineup will look like, this is what I will likely be rocking with. You use whoever you want, said that already, but just use whoever you want, whoever you have, whoever you think is better than whoever, go ahead. This is what I am comfortable using. My left fielder, and I'm already making a change, I think. Um, <laughs> I think this is going to be better now, probably. Hold on, hold on. We'll talk about it in a second. I'm doing things here. Mm, maybe not. Mm, ah, mm, ah, speed. Ah, all right, I lied. I'm going back to it. What? The? These menus just suck. The lineup menu is an abomination. Okay, starting off, in left field, we're going to have Dr. Smooth Michael Brantley, Mickey Mantle in center, Sammy Sosa, who is a core card. Of course, reminder, you can use core cards all year long when no penalty. Sammy Sosa is in right field. I have um, Chipper Jones at third base as a wild card just because I know a lot of you guys are going to do that. I've been pretty clear that I think I'm going to probably rotate my wild card between Roki Sasaki and Chipper Jones, among others, just to kind of get a feel for stuff. But just for the sake of doing what a lot of people are going to do here and to... I got, like, hiccups and burps. I'm sorry. Excuse me. And sorry to show you guys. Chipper Jones at third. So there's Chipper Jones. Derek Jeter at short. A lot of people might run David right there as a secondary. That's fine. Uh, Corey Seager's at second. That's the core collection, Corey Seager. Probably the move at second. Maybe some of you guys like that 99 Kaiju Jose Altuve. Again, go crazy. Do whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to play Josh Donaldson at first base in his secondary because I love him. Matt Holiday, DH. His card's a lot of fun. Joe Maurer catching. The bench, you can construct your bench however you like. I just looked at the best cards left over who were not starting. So for me, that's David Wright, David Ortiz, Hammer and Hank Aaron, and Aaron Judge. Uh, I truthfully hate this bench. I don't like it at all. So we have to see what set three brings. The rotation, in all likelihood, will be Verlander, Kershaw, Greg Maddox, which is strange to say, Nolan Ryan, and Randy Johnson. The bullpen is a big fat problem because I don't like half these pitchers. Rivera, Kenley Jansen, Evan Phillips, Felix Bautista, Aaron Loop, Tim Jim, Tim Hill, Aroldis Chapman, and Rich Goosey Gossage. I'm going to miss some of my set one cards. Some of my cards that will be going away forever include Ken Griffey Jr.'s Charisma card, who I loved, potentially Chipper Jones, Trey Turner, Cattell Marte is going to be gone, Bob Gibson, Pedro, maybe Roki, as we said, Alex Young has been an elite reliever. 15 innings, a 1.17 ERA, and a .46 whip. That dude's been great. Yenier Cano, love him. Devin Williams, I've loved... We're losing a lot of cards, and it's sad. But when it comes to what set two offers, I actually don't think the lineup differs a ton for most people. A couple changes here and there. And so, to talk about set three, 
or predict or or um, give our hopes for set three, we have to first start with what went wrong in set two. As we know, there were just far too many useless garbage cards. You want to call them binder fodder and collection filler? Sure, you're not wrong. A lot of people miss the mark here when I or other content creators talk about being upset at 94 overall cards. I don't know who created this narrative that we expect every card to be a 99. That's just simply not true. It's, it, it couldn't be farther from the truth. How often on this podcast do I say that the number, the rating in the top right corner hardly matters? If you're good with a 93, use the 93. I don't care what the card is rated. It comes from, if you're going to give me an 8-hour grind, I need to get something of value out of it. I'm not saying all 8 cards in that 8-hour grind need to be 99s. One or two of them could be. I, I, you know, I don't think that's asking for a lot. And then it, it, it's become an even bigger slap in the face when those big content grinds drop and two new 99s also drop that are behind a stub wall in, in Diamond Duos, a.k.a. Let's Pull a Silver packs. That's all I, I and a lot of other people are saying. I don't mean to speak for others, and I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but I, I'm pretty sure that I align with a, a, a good chunk of people here. The issue has been the grind, which I'm okay doing, has not had a positive end result. You give me the identical grind, which admittedly is sucky, but you give me the identical grind and then drop a banging 98 or 99 at the end of it that has some utility, I'm in. I'm in. I'm here for it. You won't catch complaints from me. If, if it's a grind that ends up being like remotely similar to a monthly rewards program where it's not a lightning card at the end of it because that's, that's a whole separate entity, but you know what I mean? Like we're getting 95s along the way, we're getting 97s along the way, and then bingo bongo, we get this juicy 99 at the end. Now I'm in. Now I'm here for the program. And honestly, a lot of those monthly awards henchmen will call them some of them are pretty fun and halfway decent the cards they've given us are mostly shite uh, mostly terrible as far as the father's day and the mexico series and the, you know the future stars i'd like to make one addendum to the future stars uh, uh that was a, another bad program in terms of not having 99s but those cards are fun to use i love the swings on most of those cards keston herstad might have one of the nicest swings in the game I've just discovered it. I don't know whose swing it is. If someone wants to comment down below, if they know whose swing it is, tell me. Maybe I'm stupid and I just can't figure it out. It's right in front of me. I love Keston Herstad. Or Heston Kerstad, excuse me. If they gave me a 99 of him, I'd rock with that. So I'm having fun with the cards for what they are, which is events and BR cards. Not a single card that dropped in that program is a God Squad card. There are going to be a lot of people using Bobby Miller. You'll see why on Thursday, why you probably shouldn't use Bobby Miller. Spoiler alert, had a pitch with video dropping on Thursday. Um, but ultimately, that grind was for almost nothing. So, this is all to come back to say. My theory, and I think I said this last week, but I want to reiterate it again. My theory is that SDS is going to step back in set two, set four, I guess set six. I don't know how far out they're going. So let's just say set two and four for now. So that when the next set drops, set three, set five, it feels like a real reset because you're losing all of the two sets ago cards. In this case, we're losing all of set one. Set two's cards are mostly okay. A lot of meh. So then when set three comes out, you're like, wow, I want to use that card. That card looks fun. That card looks juicy. It's a clear upgrade over who I had to keep from set two. This is a theory. The reason it's only a theory is because I have not seen a single thing about set three yet. And that, of course, makes sense because set three doesn't come out for 10 more days as of this recording. <laughs> so if that is the case, sign me up for set three. 
that doesn't make it okay that set two was the way it was. I think it's unfair to essentially take every other set off. I know that's not what they would say, and I know that's not actually what happened, but we're just using that phrasing for the sake of this conversation. If set three comes out with absolute heat, it prolongs the game's lifestyle, or, or lifespan, sorry. It reinvigorates a player base that is mostly souring on this game right now, both people who are still playing it and those who've taken steps away from the game to play other things. It's a bad look that in mid to late June, a lot of the player base is going away. It's bad. It's not good. And again, I don't think sets and seasons as a structure is the problem. Structurally, it's really cool. The issue is how they've handled the structure. Does that make sense? I think there's an important distinction to make there. 99's day one are not the problem. It has nothing to do with the fact that they're dropping weird-ass cards in the middle of set two. Doesn't make a difference. They dropped 63 99's so far in set two. That's very early in the game's life cycle still to have that many 99's. That is not the problem. The problem is that there's so many other cards that are just absolute shite that you have to grind for as if they are a 99. That's the issue. That is the core issue here. And I think, I think, if we all just wrap our heads around this, we can agree on that. If you want to give me a 10-hour grind for a day for a starting center fielder day one of set three, I will do the 10-hour grind gladly. Center field's maybe a bad example because I'm Mickey Mantle. But I just named the position. You know what I mean. If you want to give me a 10-hour grind day one of set three for a 94 overall shortstop, I'm going to be upset. That is all the, all the argument is. And I think that's fair. So let's talk about now my hopes for set three. In set one, team affinity cards. I hate this stupid noise. Sorry, let me jack this volume down. This stupid, like, electricity noise needs to go away. So set one, team affinity. Is it these cards? No, where are the cards? Those are the captains. Captains, captains. There we go. They gave us 97 overall Charisma cards. This worked for set one. Why? Because those 97s were basically the highest rated players in the game, outside of like 10 or so cards. Christian Yelich, I just so happened to click on the NL Central here. Christian Yelich was and still is one of my favorite cards in the game. He's one of the only ones I have P5. I was number 38 in the world to P5 him. I'm not gloating about that. I'm just using that as an example to show you how much I loved him. I had 473 with this card. I am gloating about that. 46 homers in 222 at-bats. This card and these cards, largely, these 97 Charisma Team of 50 cards, worked day one. Literal day one. Because we didn't have access to anything else. So then when set two comes out... Let's use the NL Central again. Do they have any good cards? Doesn't matter. We'll figure this out. Uh, no. <laughs> let's change the division here. Let's go to the NL East. They had a handful of decent ones. They had two. Whatever. Whatever. It's fine. When set two comes out, we still have access to everything from set one. All those 97s, 99s aplenty, galore, out the Yin Yang Twins. Team Affinity being 97s to start set two was not good. A lot of these cards got virtually zero use. DeGrom a little bit, but not a ton. I think everybody learned there are a lot of better pitchers than DeGrom this year. Tim Raines, I've seen a ton in, in events. Whatever. Who else did we have here? Let's. I mean, I don't want to go through the entire roster of these players, but let's just look. We'll say Halliday was used. I mean, we'll say DeGrom was used as one. Nobody from the AL East was used, really. At least in the games that I've played and seen. Nobody from the Central, the AL Central was used. Nobody, uh, a little bit of Ryan Helsley, but that's a bullpen arm, different categorization. I'll give you a little bit of Ryan Helsley, so that's basically two cards now. In the AL West, uh, I've seen McCullers, that's three. Napoli, that's four. AL West was pretty good. And in the NL West, um, that, I, I haven't honestly really seen any of these. Four out of the 30 cards have been, quote-unquote, widely used. Whereas in set one... I don't know, at least 50% of the cards were used pretty widely because they were built well and relevant to that time of the game. 
So my hope for set three, make these team affinity cards 98s and 99s. We know that not all 99s are created equal. These do not have to be the juiciest 99s in the game. Those can still be, unfortunately, in this format, the diamond duos, the collections, the, the, the choice packs like Alter Ego, whatever they're going to call it, the core collection player. Those can be the juicy, juicy, everybody wants some 99s. Because that's unfortunately just how the game is structured this year. But I think these cards to start set three need to be 98s and 99s because they need to have value. Set two got so old so fast because it started out, even though it was a whole new content drop, it started out with invaluable cards. Or, sorry, non-valuable cards. <laughs> invaluable would say that they couldn't be matched. Not valuable cards would say that they sucked. So if you start... Team Affinity 3, with a few bangers. Again, not every 99 is going to be created equal. There might be a 99 Nick Ahmed in there, just like there was a 97 Nick Ahmed. Nobody's using that card. But give us some 99s. I think that helps kickstart set 3. The other thing, and I don't know if they want to give us 30, 95 overall captains, but give us some 95 overall captains to start. Not a single one of these was ever used. <laughs> Unless content creators were doing theme teams on YouTube. Which is fine. There's a home for that. But if you make these 95, they might do more theme teams. And use them more. And get your captain usage numbers up. Because we all know the captain usage numbers are way down. We just know that. Again. <laughs> I am not asking for every card in this game to be a 99. Team Affinity is one of the longest effing grinds in this game. And I love Team Affinity. That is not me complaining about Team Affinity. I am so happy Team Affinity is back in the game this year. Truly. But Set 2's cards were bad. Just because they didn't fit in where we were with the game. If those 97's of Set 2 were the Day 1 97's, I'm in. I'm here. Because Day 1, we needed them. We don't need them anymore because we can lean on a previous season and Set now. Does that make sense to everybody? I think it does. So because we can lean on what we have before, even though set one is going away, you need to give us incentive to use these new set three cards. And in my opinion, the best way to do that is to give us 98s and 99s. I said on this podcast that there are not enough 98s in this game. It seems like a weird number to pick on. You could say there's not enough enough 96s. Like you can go into all of it. But 98s used to be something they'd give us a lot. Like here's a really good card. It's not quite a 99, but you can use it. In certain instances, maybe it's a great pinch hitter. Maybe it's a pinch runner. Maybe it's a defensive replacement. Maybe you can platoon. Because giving us a 98 gives us more attribute points to distribute across the card to make it viable. So that's my hope right now for the beginning of set three. My other hope for the beginning of set three. Here we go. Hold on. Give us more conquest maps. I can't believe I'm saying this. They give every single, um, not division, but every single region, East, West, and Central, a conquest map to start for Team Affinity. In this season, slash set, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, no, 9? Because I counted wrong. I think we only got 8 or 9 conquest maps in almost 60 days. One of, at least one of them was a City Connect. And two others, Mother's Day, Father's Day, were holidays. We need more Conquest maps for people who like to grind offline. We also need more Showdowns. I hate Showdown as well. But we need to have things that help this grind move a little quicker. At least make them optional. Part of the grinding in Set 2 that was so frustrating was that a lot of the grinding was mandatory. You had to do 5,000 PXP with the Father's Day players. What if it was you could do 5,000 PXP with Father's Day players or do this showdown instead, and then the points even themselves out? It never hurts to give people more to do. Let them play the game the way they want to play it. I, ultimately, they're the game creators, and they have created a path for their player base to play. But people who spend money on this game should be able to play it how they want. That's another reason the grind has been so frustrating. 
A lot of offline players don't think there are enough offline options to grind, and a lot of online players don't think there are enough online avenues to grind. There's just no middle ground that's been met. Let's start finding that middle ground in set three. Let's start attracting people back to the player base. Let's just start giving out cards that are valued equally to the grind you're putting in. I don't want... I'm going to keep saying it because everyone's going to skip through in this podcast and not listen to every single point I'm making, so I'm going to say it again. I don't want every card to be a 99. I don't think every card needs to be a 99. I understand that there will be plenty of programs, packs, handouts, etc. that are 93s, 94s, 95s. We have to populate BR. We have to populate event lineups. We have to populate binders. I get it. And that's fine. That makes sense. It's a card collecting mode. That's that's Diamond Dynasty. But at its core, we all want good cards to play with. And so if you're going to give me an 8-hour grind, I want at least one good card out of it. A usable good card. I do think there is some sort of disconnect between someone at SDS or people at SDS and what the community largely looks for. I'm not blaming it on one person. I don't know who it is. And we know SDS knows how to do content because in the past they've done it really, really well. Really well. It just stinks this year that the content is lagging so far behind the gameplay when it always used to be the other way around. So I just think there's some sort of disconnect here with like cards the community knows is good or knows are good. Excuse me, speak like a human, you idiot. And then cards that the the developers or the content people think should be good. Does that make sense? I think it does. There's there's a there's a weird relationship going on there. And SDS has done a great job of bringing in people from our community to work for them. And I have faith and trust in, in what they're doing and that they can communicate what the player base wants and what SDS is trying to do. And they can bridge the gap. I have full confidence in that. I just, this year, something with content just seems off. At least from set two. I think set two has left such a sour taste in our mouths that has perhaps overshadowed how fun set one was. Because I think set one was a lot of fun. If set three can recapture a little bit of what set one was and what set one looked like, it can't be a one-to-one, it won't be exactly the same because this game's been out for so long now, but if it can get a little bit, a little bit closer to set one, I think, I think we've, we've got something here. I think we've figured out sets and seasons as a method. But guys, that is going to be it for today's podcast. Let me go back to the, the full face here. If you guys have thoughts on this, I know you do, on this conversation, leave them down below. Let me know what you think. Um, what are you most looking forward to about set three? How can they make set three better? Do you agree with me about set one actually being fun and we all just kind of forgot about it? And let me know. Just let me know your thoughts and let me know what you think. One other thing, everybody. This is the show, the podcast merch. We're selling it. You can buy it at the link in the description down below. We've got some shirts, a mug, a sticker. I think we have a tank top in there. The show, the podcast. Go support your boy. I'd appreciate it thoroughly. But that is it, everybody. Thank you for making it to the end of another episode of the show, the podcast. Be on the lookout for more content this week. Whiteboard Wednesday on, you guessed it, Wednesday. How to pitch with on Thursday. Streams and stuff when we can get them going. Follow me on Kick, just in case we move to Kick. Kick Kick.com slash KDJTV. Otherwise, you can go and follow me on Twitch, too. I'm there. Sometimes I live stream and talk to people. Um, But that's all. Thank you guys for being here. Love you all so much. See you next time.